Profile. 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 A fact-finding mission on matters of development by the Government Information Service. The government of Dominica in 2006, bearing in mind the deplorable living conditions of some of its citizens, embarked on a program which has transformed the lives of many across the island. Madam Speaker, the housing revolution which is ongoing has touched the lives of thousands of Dominicans, particularly disadvantaged among us. As part of this revolution, the government has embarked upon a very ambitious program for addressing the housing needs in Dominica. One of the components of this program included the repair, renovation and the sanitation of several houses across the country. Government through this avenue sought to bring relief to hundreds of nationals. These groups include the elderly, single, female-headed households, people living with disabilities, persons on government public assistance program, terminally ill individuals to include HIV and AIDS, victims of fire and natural disaster, mentally ill persons. Anfia Joseph is the liaison officer in the Ministry of Housing. She has been actively involved in identifying those who are in need. The program is geared at assisting persons who are in need, desperately in need of shelter. A survey conducted between 1998 and 1999 revealed that over 5,000 homes in Dominica were in urgent need of repairs. I guess um, previous governments either didn't see the need, they didn't, probably didn't find it necessary to embark on a program okay, of such magnitude. And so the, the, the documents were sitting gathering dust on the shelves. The housing conditions therefore worsened and it was becoming increasingly difficult for the disadvantaged to get a good night's sleep. I go to people's homes and they, they take me to their bedrooms and show me how many pills and buckets they have collecting water um, and it's, it's, it's cramped up there. When the DLP government housing revolution program came into effect, the conditions of some of the homes were beyond repair. Even some of those houses we attempted to repair, they were so bad in terms of the need of repairs, that you virtually had to break down the entire house, move the families from that house, break down the entire house, and to rebuild, and, and, and to rebuild the houses. In the north of the island, a family home was completely rebuilt after officials of the housing division determined that it was beyond repair. It was a wooden house, which my father said it was over 40 years old and more, and it was falling apart, I must say. The flooring was going and thing. So when the government started um, assisting my parents with the house, they was going to renovate it. And when they started doing the construction on the house, they saw that it, we needed a brand new house. So they went on and gave us this um, house right there. As I must say, it was a blessing. The work of the housing division has become increasingly challenging as the demand for assistance increases. We interview the persons to determine their status, uh, how many children that they, they have, whether they're employed or not, um, whether they fit within the target groups that have been identified by the ministry, and um, what kind of repair, what kind of repairs that they are looking for. Mr. Hilarion Jones is acting manager of the housing division. His role includes the allocation of government house lots and the management of housing estates. He also plays a major role in the supervision of the Housing Revolution program. There are lots a lot of activities, a lot of report writing, a lot of evaluation, um, and so managing the whole aspect of housing as far as um, preparation, implementation on behalf of government is concerned. 
His observation and personal involvement in the program has led him to recognize its impact on so many lives. On a daily basis, on a weekly basis, people approach the housing division, the minister for housing, the PS, the local government authorities, and you know, outline their plight and make demands. And so we, we note to the, the, the huge sums of monies that have been spent on that. So when you put all this together, clearly there is, in fact, a great impact on the ground, um, in affecting the people's lives in a positive way. When reports of the housing conditions of some of our elderly and single parents across the island reach his desk, he wishes he could reach out to all. But reality hits. The port for the resource, the financial resource, is not endless. The selection process, therefore, is challenging. We put figures to these assessments, but at the end of the day, what is actually implemented is less, of course, because um, of, of scarce resources. With a new initiative like this, and with increasing demands from the public, no one, including Housing Minister Honorable Reginald Austri, expected it to be easy. I'll be honest with you, it's a... Uh... It's a difficult program. Despite the realities, however, government was determined to avoid the mistakes made by previous administrations. The previous government gave building materials to persons after Hurricane Lenny was, and those materials never found their way on the house. Some of those materials were sold, so it was paro, okay, and because because of the manner in which it was done. To avoid this. The administration moved to take on the responsibility for the repairs with the assistance of small contractors who worked at reduced rates. But as we go along, we found out about this person has a, has a son who can probably give some assistance. So what we're talking about really is we need to put in some sweat equity. So they were assisting in the program themselves and contributed some, some maybe valued at over $80,000 in terms of the labor that they contributed to that program. Despite the effort to allow persons to help in the process, the housing minister is aware that there are those who need full assistance. The 96-year-old man that's sleeping on a dirt floor, okay, you have to take him right through the process. He might even have to end up buying a stove, like we've done for some persons for the Petrochemical project, buy stove for them, buy gas tanks for them, okay? You have, you have to electrify the house for him. Petra Mitchell from Marigot is the mother of eight boys. With space becoming limited and unable to afford the extension of a wooden home, she sought assistance from the housing division. My house was a very small house in the first place. I didn't have enough space to put the kids. With the assistance from the division, Petra and the eight boys are living in a four-bedroom house instead of the two bedrooms which previously existed. This has been a life-changing experience. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. But then I will go ahead even though and try to help myself in certain things that I need. Her neighbor looks on. She too needs help but is confident that her turn will come soon. Of course, there are some persons who are going to be disappointed that oh, so long, you know, you contacted me and nothing is happening. That simply speaks again to the demand and the scarce resources. Their stories may be different, but across the island, beneficiaries speak freely and with much excitement of the impact of the Housing Revolution program on their lives. I was living with my granny, but she died, she had a husband, he died too, but he had other children. So the last boy of his, he oversees. So when my granny died, you know, he told me that he wanted the house. So I have to leave, so I asked some assistance for the government, for the government. And they did assist me. And I was well pleased for that. And now I live in happy. Nobody want to tell me to leave their place. So there is, so I will happy. There are 17 communities within the Rosa South constituency, including Eggleston, Girodel, Kingsville, Fortney, and Newtown. The housing program in this part of the island is being coordinated by Felix Thomas. Between 2009 and 2010, 
Thomas sought to use the $580,000 presented to him by government to address the housing needs of residents within his constituency. Many persons from the constituency um, continue to receive a level of assistance to help in um, real deplorable you know, housing conditions. He supervised the allocation of funds for the installation of toilets, re-roofing of houses and the installation of new doors and windows throughout the constituency. We ensured that we had a minimum of two bedrooms where you had you know, the gender you know, um, difference. So we wanted to ensure that that was you know, included as part of the program. Assessments carried out by the Housing Division reveal that over $3.9 million would be required to address the housing needs of the less fortunate in the Roseau South constituency. To date, we have um, assisted well over 175 persons throughout the length and breadth you know, of the constituency. He is confident that despite the limited resources, the housing revolution has met its objectives. While people may, may see their own justification in criticizing such a program, when you look at the total benefit and the outcome of that program, there is no justification in the undue censorship or criticism of that entire housing revolution program. Throughout the island, the success stories associated with this revolutionary initiative continued to pour out of the leaps of the beneficiaries. Beneficiaries like Clavia Simon, who had for years lived in a house whose condition was far from ideal. Even it was crucial, really dangerous. It was leaking and all kind of thing was passing over it and it was very dangerous. Now she and her family have a new home with larger rooms and more floor space. I feel better, I feel proud. 74-year-old widow Elma Thomas is all smiles now and who can blame her? She too has been touched by the housing revolution program and life has become more enjoyable. When I first went in the house, he told me, my William, you need a, you need a house and I'll give you a house. Eh? I'm rain falling and warm. And it's just good, good for me because elderly people are getting old, you know. You need a new warm place for you to stay. Millicent Jules is excited about the repairs to her home. She still remembers the former conditions and has a great appreciation for the assistance from the housing division. The condition was very bad. It was very, very bad. When Mr. Scarlett came once here, he passed through to go up. In his way down, I was sitting down there. I tell him, Prime Minister, look at my house. It was very bad. Bad, 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 bad. All this, however, is in the past. So All the house was rotten. All was rotten. The garden as well rotten. Everything. God bless him. God will give him long life, health and strength, and his cabinet. With these success stories, it is clear that government's housing revolution program has in fact impacted significantly on the less fortunate in communities island-wide. Just speaking to the people out there and seeing the reaction and gauging the demand at the housing division um, tells you that there is in fact a great demand for, for repairs of homes. Meeting the growing demands can be challenging, but the program has yielded major economic benefits to the island's economy. What we have done is that all the building materials for the housing revolution, seven except one shipment which we did very early on in the housing program, all the building materials were purchased from local suppliers of building materials, all. Throughout the island, each beneficiary of the housing program has his own unique story. But all end the same. Comfort, joy, improved night's rest, Richard Roy of Vekas is one of very few words, but he tells his story so well. The um, government approached me and they decided to build this new little structure for me, which I appreciated very much because I had a former wooden house. 
it was not in good shape and I could not afford to um, really do something better. I got the assistance from government which I appreciate very much. When you hear of the stark reality of how some of the island's people live, you understand the relief in their voices and on their faces when they speak of the assistance they received from government. Well, when they give it to me, I used to sleep on the Zabo country there, put down the lash on the ground and lie down and cover myself and hide myself for people to do with me. As one gets older, it is increasingly important to ensure that they are in a comfortable home. For centenarian Sidoro Alexander, however, this was not always the case. Before it was a very disturbing house. It was very old, falling. Maybe if she was heavy, she would reach under the cell already. It wasn't good at all. It was leaking. It was just bad. Well, on rainy day, the places that leaking, I'll just block it with a piece of cloth. Like some um, part of the roof. Things are better now. Now she has a very comfortable house. She can move freely. Mm -hmm. No problem at all. She even has a porch. I can take her and take mm -hmm. some breeze. Mm -hmm. Before in the old house she had to climb a step, but now can just she has a wheelchair just roll out. She's very mm -hmm. comfortable now. She has toilet bathroom. Despite the evident success of the program, the current administration has been criticized for initiating the revolutionary housing program. The opposition criticize that program. That's the hurtful part about it. The housing minister is however convinced that the program has had a major social impact in communities island-wide. The housing revolution has gone a long way in empowering people and in is, 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 is putting us on, on, on a path where we can begin to see a more gentler, a kinder, a more loving society. Madrina Thomas from Bagatelle would agree. She too has been touched by the program. The housing division has facilitated the expansion of a dwelling house. What they give me, it's sufficient for me. When I go up, I cry. I sit down, I cry. I praise God. I praise God for the government. I praise God for Kenko for helping me because I know where I could push my hand to make a little house to buy a little pie wood. Alice Gasper is one of several single parents who have benefited from the program. The condition of my house before was in a terrible state. Leaking, two bedroom with seven children, and thank God, government come and give me one with three bedroom. So I feeling happy, and I hope he continue, you know, to do that because I have a lot of parents with mothers only and need comfort. So it's very enjoyable. Florestin Tuse from Dubik has four children attending school and is unemployed. Together, they lived in very poor conditions. I live a dirty, dirty, bad, 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 bad life in my life. But the house I live in down, when rain, I have to put a bucket to shelter water for me. This is now a thing of the past. And now, the doctor come in that situation, he give me a little house, so I can say praise God. I, I can say praise God I live a new life now. The housing revolution program has had an impact on government's resources, but the country's leader believes it was necessary. Uh, the government is not responsible for building hope for anybody. That's not our responsibility at all. But we feel a certain um, sense of compassion, love and concern for our people. That's why we have, we have placed so much attention on this housing revolution. So the program continues and with it the many happy faces and success stories of many whose lives have been transformed. Before I had a um, other home and the home get bad. And before right now I am so happy. I thank God for it. And God bless Mr. Skerritt. I didn't have a house of my own. I was very happy for receiving the assistance from the government. For people like Annette Dover, who was provided with materials to repair a home, she will never forget the provision of assistance from the Division of Housing. I want to thank them a lot, very much, you understand, for helping me. You understand, because I was down and out. You understand, and everybody used to give me a lot of um, make pray and tell me a lot of things about I got a roof over my head, but housing helped me. You understand? 
and I, I, I appreciate it very well. You know, praise the Lord for them, for housing.